Hi, this is Dr. Rafi Romano. I'm delighted to present you my um, series uh, with a lot of clinical tips uh, about uh, orthodontics in general and about aesthetic orthodontics. Uh, as you can see, I've published uh, five books and edited uh, one distinguished, uh, distinguished uh, journal. And um, I want to give you uh, my tip of the day. Uh, this series will concentrate on the biomechanics uh, in lingual orthodontics and the tip number one will concentrate on the center of rotation which is called core, C-O-R, and the moments in lingual orthodontics. Uh, you can see here the book uh, that was published uh, a few years ago about lingual and aesthetic orthodontics. Most of the material I speak about appear in that book. Now, in lingual orthodontics in general and in orthodontics um, uh, specifically, uh, we want to concentrate on planning exactly what we are moving and to move only what we are planning. Now, what is moment of forces? Moment of forces is uh, combined from the force, double the distance we are um, um, we're having between the bracket where we apply the force and the center of resistance of the tooth. Obviously, today in orthodontics, we try to minimize the force to be as small as possible for various reasons, for pain, root resorption, and, and uh, control, good control of the teeth movement. Uh, so our problem is that when, when we want to move teeth and we need a very good and large moment, for example, to rotate a tooth, we need a distance. And if you look at uh, the location of the center of resistance, it is uh, usually uh, located around 0.24 to 0.55 of the root length at the alveolar crest, um, slightly apical to it. Now, uh, it depends, uh, this range between 0.24 and 0.55, is because of different uh, way to measure it. There is also many factors like if we ligate few teeth together we take the center of resistance more up. If there is periodontal problems the center of res resistance also goes up. So in general uh, the location is, is very a virtual point that we have to kind of uh, uh, visualize and, and uh, uh, imagine where exactly it is. Now, uh, we will concentrate on three teeth position, uh, which is uh, the obvious normal um, situation when we do orthodontics. One is a normal tooth position in terms of the angulation and torque. One is procline and one is retrocline. Of course, the normal is more uh, typical for class one malocclusion, the procline more for class two division one, and the retrocline more to class 2, division 2. Now, if you look here in a normal tooth position and you compare the location of the bracket in the buccal orthodontics and the bracket in the lingual orthodontics, you can see that by moving the bracket lingually, we actually take the bracket down. So if you apply a horizontal force on the, with the same magnitude of force, the lingual bracket will create a much larger retroclination force on the tooth. Meaning that many times when we apply a distalization force, we have to take into consideration the side effect of getting a more retroclined position. Now if we go for the same situation but in a proclined tooth, you can see that now the difference in the height of the buccal bracket to the center of resistance and the lingual bracket, now it is really a big gap between these two techniques. What is the clinical implications? When we apply on a class 2 division 1 procline teeth, we apply a force we use many times round wires in order to uh, retro retrocline the tooth. Now, if you do lingual orthodontics, 
we have to take into consideration that the retroclination moment is now twice or even three times bigger on the same magnitude of force. That's why we almost never close spaces or retrocline teeth in lingual orthodontics on round wires. We will do it on rectangular wires in order to have a good control on the torque while we retrocline the tooth. In a retroclination uh, situation like in class 2 division 2, the two brackets now are almost on the same height from center of resistance. Does it make situation in lingual better? Not necessarily, because in a retrocline tooth, when we have a retroclination moment, we are in a very big problem. So uh, uh, we have to take that as well into consideration. Now let's talk about the vertical force, about intrusion force. Again, let's compare between buccal and lingual. When we uh, have a buccal bracket and we bite on the bracket, normally we get protrusion. The reason is because the bracket is ahead of the center of resistance. We have a big gap. This is why in most crowded case, when we put a wire, after a while we get a proclination. If it's not desired, we can of course cinch back the wire, but we have to take that side effect into consideration. Now, in lingual orthodontics, and this is for normal tooth position, the distance between the bracket and center of resistance is very small. This is why our proclination moment is very, very minimal. And if you look at proclined tooth position, we get some advantage in lingual orthodontics because now we are more close to center of resistance and we have less proclination moment. But if you look at the retroclined tooth position, now our lingual bracket can be behind center of resistance. Now what does it mean? You have a class 2 division 2, you have a retroclination and patient is now biting on the upper bracket. Now if the bracket is behind center of resistance, what happens now is the next appointment you will see the tooth now more retroclined without applying almost any force, just by biting on a bracket which is behind center of resistance. This is why we need to think how to add some moments to this equation. We can do some nickel titanium coil spring and push the teeth out. We can put some composite on the posterior teeth and avoid this occlusion until the tooth correct its torque. But anyway, this phenomenon has to be taken into account. If you look at this uh, beautiful illustration that was taken from um, um, uh, a CD-ROM made by Skutsu and Takamoto many years ago, you can see that by biting on a buccal bracket, we get a moment which is approximately a few hundred grams. And then um, uh, when you go to a lingual orthodontics, this moment is now sometimes negative and uh, can uh, be um, like uh, 50 to 100 grams retroclination moment. Uh, the last point I want to uh, emphasize is that regardless what kind of bracket we are using, it can be customized like Incognito, Win, uh, E-Brace, Harmony, etc. It can be um, like um, uh, any 2D uh, bracket. When you place it on the buckle, the net force of the two vectors, vertical and horizontal, pass almost through the center of resistance. When we go lingually, this uh, force here between the verti vertical and the horizontal will pass always behind the center of resistance. And this is why in all lingual cases we have a retroclination moment. This is why most of the brackets have excessive torque built in them in order to compensate on that retroclination force. Sometimes the laboratory will prepare for you an extra torque in the bracket and sometimes a computerized, customized wire will have inside this extra torque to compensate on that phenomenon. Take it into account. Uh, the last point is the size of the composite 
between the bracket and the tooth. Many times we want to compensate on the individual variation between one tooth to another. There are teeth that are very thin and teeth that are very thick and we want to compare all of them and to equalize them and we add some composite at the base of the bracket. These composites are changing the biomechanic of our system. If we take the bracket now far away from center of resistance, there will be a different biomechanics for every tooth and this is not always what we wanted. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in our next series on Dr. Romano Tips of the Day.